Uh, please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Larry Cohen. Here. Betsy Dennis. Here. Jennifer Edge. Excuse me. Christine Galvo. Excuse me. Frank Garnett. Here. Georgia Patchen. Here. Mary Beth Stevens. Here. Melissa Thompson. Here. Bill Zop. Here. Dr. Benmo, could you review the fire exits, please? Yes, I will. The fire exits are located at the back of the theater on both sides. Thank you. Uh, present the workshop. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, tonight we have two workshop uh, programs for presentation. Uh, first, that of uh, our mentor presentation. And we will have uh, Dr. Esposito and Mr. Weir, who uh, have run this program for us, uh, will be making that presentation. Following that, we'll have a presentation, again by Linda Esposito, regarding the primary literacy intervention program and elementary math program recommendations. These programs are on the agenda tonight. We're recommending for adoption. Our uh, desire to do so this evening is so that we can purchase some materials, especially teacher editions, and get them in the hands of teachers before the end of the school year. It would be most helpful. Um, so, Linda, I'm going to turn it over to you and Paul. Good evening. I wanted to begin by introducing uh, Paul Weir. He is the mentor coordinator for the district. The mentoring program, I can't say enough good things about a program that helps teachers enter the profession successfully. The program has been well spoken of, well regarded throughout the district, and I give the credit to that to Mr. Weir, and I'd like him to have an opportunity now to introduce his mentors and mentees. Thank you very much, Dr. Esposito. Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Banlow, faculty, staff, community members. Thank you very much for this opportunity to recognize um, the program um, that uh, really does speak to support. Um, I'd like to thank all the participants for the, successful, uh, the successfulness of this year's mental program. Um, it would not be possible to have a successful program without the participation and support of uh, some very highly qualified mentors who have taken or added to their uh, professional responsibilities to mentor teachers uh, in a myriad of ways um, to make them come to help them become comfortable in their role as educators. Uh, we know that you know educating children uh, can be very very rewarding. It does have its challenges, and I'm sure they can all give their stories about the challenges and re uh, rewards uh, that they've encountered this year. Um, firstly, I'd like to recognize the mentors, and I and I really like to thank them for coming out this evening um, in support of this program, in support of their men mentees as we conclude this, uh, this year. Um, I'd like to thank Kim Atwell, Robert Atwell, Karen uh, DeCandia, uh, Michelle Araka, Jennifer Fisher, Jim Johnson, Kathy Lyon, Philistine Oliver, Monica Paredes, Cindy Pomerico, Gloria Rosati, Jennifer Willie, thank you very much for your support. And I'd like to ask if we could give them a round of applause for their work. Uh, we have two groups that are being uh, recognized with certificates this, uh, this evening. Uh, firstly, our teachers that joined us uh, this past year. Uh, they've been with the program one year. And um, I'd like to call them up in alphabetical order. If your mentee, uh, for the mentors, if your mentee isn't here, uh, I'd like you to come up to accept the certificate on their behalf. Thank you very much. And if the mentors aren't here, I'll, I'll accept it on their behalf. Um, Tara Crowder. Thank 
you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amy Heatherly. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Brian Lang. Jessica McDonald. David McPartland. Caitlin Morrison. Carol Nadu. Jennifer Pikas, Bonnie Stafford, and uh, Scott Tempano. Second group are those who have gone through the mentoring program for second year, and I'd like to recognize the following with certificates: uh, Ryan Antelek. I think Ryan's preparing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Allison Byback. Cole Curtin also has a commitment, but Kathy, please come up for her. Angela DeLeo. Caitlin King. Becky Shunk. Rebecca Sorcy. Lauren Stoll. Uh, Talita Tomas. Is also absent this evening, and Heather Winter. Congratulations! And thank you very much, Dr. Bando, for allowing us to do this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Weir, for your hard work in this. Dr. Esposito, should we go to our programs? Sure. Okay.
Thursday night at the Education Committee meeting, we presented um, two different policy option briefs. The policy option briefs that you received in your board packets this weekend were prepared by Nicole Triassi as part of an administrative internship project that she worked on. But tonight I want to present to you the two programs so that you understand what we're asking you to act to adopt this evening. Um, both of the programs went through a similar process in terms of how we went about selecting the program. Initially, we gathered a small group of what we considered to be experts. The group of literacy experts were our district reading teachers. The group of math program experts were a committee of teachers who were assembled last school year to begin the selection process for a, a district math program. Each of those committees got together and assembled a list of criteria that they believed were the most important attributes of a curriculum program to be considered for adoption. Those attributes were formulated into a survey instrument. The survey instrument was reviewed by a group of administrators in the district as well as by um, the committee at large to determine what our priorities would be. We calculated numerically, and you can see the numerical calculations again in your policy option brief, four different program options for each. Okay. For the um, primary grade literacy program, what you need to know is that that is not our entire literacy program at the elementary level. That is a tier two primary grade literacy intervention. We are mandated to have a formal scientifically research-based intervention as part of our response to um, intervention initiative. Okay. Currently in district, our balanced literacy program is the Teachers College Tier 1 balanced literacy program that every student participates in across the board. But when students fail to make progress within that program, uh, to date, we did not have a uniform solution with which to treat students that were having difficulty. So the proposal that you see, the Wilson's Foundation proposal, is the proposal to have this intervention kit that would be used throughout the district to remediate when students were showing difficulty in their primary literacy acquisition within that program. Um, we did consider four different programs. The Wilson's Foundation program um, was widely felt to be the program that um, counterbalanced some of the uh, areas in which we felt that our Tier 1 program maybe was not the strongest insofar as the Tier 1 program is very um, based on reading comprehension and we felt that if students in the primary grades were lacking in reading fluency that they would benefit from a program like the Foundations program more so than one that was additionally focused on comprehension. Um, we also felt that in terms of staff development that this program would be able to be implemented in a way that some of the other programs that we had considered would not easily be able to be implemented with the number of other initiatives we have next year. Um, it is a very well regarded program, the Wilson Reading Program, and it is also a program that we use with success at the secondary level. The Foundations program is the primary literacy intervention for a program that scales from grades K to 12. Okay. So that is the primary grade literacy program that we are recommending to use as our Tier 2 intervention. You can see that we did include a cost for purchasing all of the component parts. Know that for both of these, we're looking to use title funds to address the curricular needs that we have in both uh, reading and in mathematics and that right now this would be the full complement of what we believe we need 
However, as we start to compare our needs for next year, because we have a lot of needs for next year, it may be the case that we will reduce these, but it will, neither adoption will exceed the amount that you see here. Um, so that was the Wilson's Foundation Tier 2 Literacy Intervention Program. For mathematics, last year many different programs were considered, many of them considered to be reform-oriented programs in nature. <coughs> reform-oriented programs are very different than traditional math programs and require a great deal of staff development to implement. Because of the number of staff development initiatives that we have being new at the beginning of next school year, we began our research into a new program this year by saying that we needed something that we could implement without a great deal of staff development. Of the four programs that we considered, the Envision Math program, again, through um, survey methods and with multiple committees meeting, was determined to have extremely high quality resources for differentiating classroom instruction and for tier two interventions for struggling learners. Keeping in mind that currently we have um, a 1998 copyright Scott Forsland Addison Wesley program in district that has not been used with a great deal of fidelity. So right now we're looking for a tier one math program that every student uses and a tier two intervention component that goes with it to help the students who show that they are struggling with the program. So the adoption that you see for um, Pearson and Vision for grades K to five is a program that would be both tier one, the entire math program, and tier two, an intervention component for students who are struggling. Um, the program packaging to this program was another attribute that um, teachers felt made it um, more desirable than some of the others that it was being compared to. In terms of functionality, um, many of the other programs that were out there were 100% consumable, so if a student used it this school year and wrote in it, we would have to buy an entire new program the following school year. We decided that that would not be a cost-effective option moving forward. Okay. Some of the others had both textbook and workbook components embedded within <coughs> them. That was another um, attribute that teachers didn't want to send kids home with both the textbook and the workbook and assume that both would come back the following day. So in terms of functionality, this program we felt was functional. We thought that it did what it needed to do in terms of differentiating instruction and the ability of having a tier one intervention for struggling learners. Um, as you can see in the policy option brief, it received the highest rating of all four programs, as did the Wilson Foundations of the four programs it was being compared with. Um, and we feel confident, uh, confident in both of our recommendations being things that will improve learning for our students. Anyone have questions about either of the two programs? Just a, just a comment, Linda, I wanted to thank you for a very, very thorough job that uh, you and Nicole and the members of both committees uh, followed an extremely rigorous protocol in your examination of possible programs. You uh, did uh, a very, very thorough job in considering uh, all the uh, pros and cons of each. And, uh, and I believe the recommendations are very sound. We had a good discussion in our education committee last Thursday with board members and others who were present at that meeting. And uh, I think that uh, the questions were robust and uh, that, that uh, they show the strength of uh, the work of what you've done. So I think it's a, it's a very, very sound, uh, not only sound recommendations, but I think this adoption is probably the single most important thing we can do this year that's going to set us toward some real serious improvement and achievement uh, going forward. If you don't mind, I just wanted to no. comment. Um, I know that for a while the Education Committee um, has had concerns about um, RTI. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that both of these programs have here are the Tier 2 type of um, resources for the students. Um, it also has um, ways to measure um, 
the progress of the of the students. Um, and I I think the other thing that we liked is that um, no matter what school elementary school you were in, you were getting the same program. Um, so being a small city school, we have you know a lot of children uh, moving in and out of the district, and we even have children that move within schools in our own district. Um, so a student that you know, is here and may move out of the district for a little bit, but was in Sargent School and then comes back and maybe is in Glenham. Um, it's the same program um, that they're used to. So there were, uh, you know, a number of factors that they looked into. Um, and as Dr. Banlow said, it was really a comprehensive study of the different um, things that were in front of us. As Linda mentioned, um, most of the cost is going to be addressed through Title I grants. Um, and as you can see here that um, the math program was last um, introduced in 1998. So, um, you know, I, I just want to commend uh, Nicole and everyone that was involved in there. And um, I thought we had some nice discussions at the Education Committee meeting and it was recommended that it be brought to the um, to an open meeting because it does affect the teachers. They have a new, pretty much math curriculum that they're going to have to get in place by September, and to also let parents know that you know there's going to be some changes and modifications in it. Okay. So, um, yes. And as Dr. Bando stated earlier, um, the initiative to bring it to the full board only the Monday after the Thursday meeting was really to make sure that we can get instructional materials in teachers' hands before they leave at the end of the school year because there are so many new initiatives coming up in September. Um, I have a question. I agree with, with all the statements thus far regarding you know the need for, for the programs. The research done, Nicole, what an amazing job your presentation and Linda you know, I attended the education committee. I'm worried about the dollar value. I'm mm -hmm. worried about, you know, July 1 starts the new school year. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned Title I funds. Well, I'm a Glenham family, and we're not <coughs> entitled to Title I right. funds. Yes. So do we have this from a financial standpoint all mapped out in our business office, or is this something that we're still working on? Um, right now, I've looked at what we have left of title funding from this year and what I would project that we will have next year and believe that we will be able to implement both. But what happens to the building that isn't entitled right. to title every, every building will receive these resources. We will purchase them with district funds. But how do you, how do you pay for I district funds right. for yes. Glenham right. if right. Glenham's not entitled to Title I funding? Right. Um, we will work out the Glenham part of it. So then Glenham's not going to get paid for out of Title I funding? Right. We'll come up with another approach. And this has been worked through in the business office. I guess my that's my concern, right. um, that we have this mapped out in the business office prior to make any types of approvals. Um, we need to know that, that the funding is there and available so that we can move forward. And if it's not, then perhaps we need to table it until we're able to ensure that. Um, at this point, I would say that because we um, put a maximum cost on it and not um, the exact cost, we haven't worked out the details of how much the proposal will be at this point. So if you'd like that to be the details of it for the next meeting, we can do that and table it if you wish. Well, I mean, you know, based on math, it's, it would be 40000 that's not covered potentially under the, uh, you know, title... Title one number, um, you know, I don't know, you know, business office wise, I think that, you know, the, the well, slush fund or whatever could cover, you know. Also, is it, is it coming out of this year's funding or is it coming out of next year's funding? The bulk of it should be this year's funding. What's left over from this year's funding? I, in just my opinion, to hold up, you know, a tier two RTI process where our elementary school children are failing, um, 
you know, on the New York State report card, um, I think even though it's not, a portion of it would not be covered by Title I, I think it's probably, um, you know, money well spent. You're talking about 700 um, children that are going to be benefited from a Tier 1, Tier 2 um, educational program. I don't think anybody's challenging the validity of the program. I think from what I read in the presentation, it looks like it's a great program for us. I'm more concerned about the details of the funding. About the details of the funding. Yeah, about the details of the funding. Some of it's coming this year. Some is coming from next year. Uh, um, budget. Um, I, I don't want to put Anne Marie on the spot, but I'm going to. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do, okay. And and. I don't know if you have the answers or not because I'm putting you on the spot. Okay. So I apologize in advance. Um, do we actually have Title I funding money left over this year to pay for this program? And if you're... I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, that's we have rollover answer. money. I don't know. Um, you know. I didn't know how much this was until today, so I don't know. And I know that the piece of Glenn has to come out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do we have... Well, it's that it's stupid. Of course, we, we even if we don't have it, we have it because if we're going to go to the program, we're going to pay for it for Glennon because we're not excluding right. the school. Right. It's, that's ridiculous. I'm not even going to ask that question. I'm more concerned about the Title One funding if that's what the object was in order to pay for this. So is it? You can't get an answer in the next 15 minutes, can? No. <laughs> yeah. I wish but from I could. a finance, but from an accounting standpoint, is it easier? For, the, for an approval tonight and try to work those numbers now when July 1 is, you know, right around the corner? Would it be easier to wait for approval at our reorg meeting so that all of those ducks can be in a row? You know, obviously, everyone knows I come from an accounting standpoint, so I need, to, you know, confidence that you're rolling up the year right now. You're trying to get those things done. Is it better for you that we wait for those approvals? One of the things that the business office is working on this week is to try to, to tighten up the title, all of the grants, the special ed grants and the title grants. So we are currently working on that to see what is available, what won't be spent by June 30th, and what could be rolled over. So that's a process that's happening this week, um, and we're also trying to figure out how much of the general fund is left and how much we could roll over. So between now and the next board meeting, we would have a better idea, um, and you know, if the board is asking for a specific budget codes as to where it's coming from, then that would be a better time um, to do that. And, and I think that's the answer that, that if you do want that level to know exactly where it's coming from, we can't give that to you tonight. That's true. However, we do know, and uh, we have had conversations about where we are with the rollover, that we will have some surpluses. And we do have some funds available and that we can use for this purpose, and we can use it this year. So we do know that the funds are there, even though we cannot tell you specifically fund numbers or exactly how much uh, would come from title and how much from which other accounts. Uh, it's not unusual to combine in a purchase like this, uh, especially with title funds, funds from one year with another year to make a, a purchase of this magnitude. That, that is routine. I don't think that anyone is questioning um, the process. I think the question, you know, we're not talking about 20 grand. We're talking about $164,000 that we need to ensure that all those ducks are in a row. We're not talking about a small dollar amount. And I think, I don't, I don't want anyone to feel as though I'm nitpicking. That's a dollar amount that we as board members are, you know, voted to watch those numbers and to ensure that we're doing our best to be on top of that. So. I just wanted to clear that up. I don't want anyone to think, I truly believe that our children need these programs. There's absolute value in them. I've done my research on both. I attended the education committee meeting. There is in no way that I'm saying I'm not for these programs. I'm saying we need to ensure that we have all the pieces lined up prior to approval so that when we say, when we approve the expense, we can move straight forward with the purchase. But. I guess my question on that is that by approving the program, we're then sending it back to 
to the administrative building to take care of the financial part. I, I don't know in the past where we have put an approval contingency on the um, board office telling us, you know, what fund is the money coming out of. Um, I think that they would come back to us at the next meeting saying, um, you know, we're not able to fund this program that you put, that they presented to us. Mm -hmm. So I'm not necessarily comfortable saying that I can't approve the program until you tell me, you know, what accounting code it's coming out of. And Mary Beth, you know something, you're, you're right. However, we've also never been given something to approve after it was decided three days ago. We've always approved things mm -hmm. over a period of weeks right. with a presentation by the committee to the board at large with discussion. And that's because of, of the, the speed at which this is needed, has needed to be done. That step has been missed. So things are all different. Question. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, this is the first. I'm, I'm sorry, but let me. I, I just want to. Until I got the packet, I had no idea that this was going to be done. And if I didn't look at my packet until Sunday because I was away, I wouldn't know about it until yesterday. So that we were doing this. Typically, when we've had presentations by the education committee on new curriculum, on new textbooks, new whatever. A presentation was made by building administration, by the by the committee to the rest of the board. It was a larger discussion, it was a workshop, and there was a lot of information conveyed, and then the decision was made a week or two later for adoption. So in case there was any question about economics or whatever, those things were remedied beforehand. We've never been put in the position of having to approve something without having the opportunity and the luxury of time to ask the questions before voting on it. Well, I would so, say so that's prior, different. Prior to you coming on, we have had that. Well, I'm in my third term. It hasn't happened since I'm here. Because I haven't been looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question. I know one of the one of the reasons for wanting to get it adopted tonight was so that an order could be placed and materials could be given to the teachers. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility for ordering materials for the teachers? I mean, because obviously the, the majority of this right. is the, is right the now, student we materials. We can't place an mm -hmm. order for materials till the board acts to adopt the programs. Um, so uh, if Makes we sense. want to table that tonight, then I need to wait until the next board meeting to order materials for right. teachers, which likely means they will not happen before the end of the school year. Right. No, any, yes. any, do you have any feel for what, what uh, ordering materials for teachers only, what that cost is? It would be um, significantly reduced. But uh, I assume it would be sensitive. Right, sens right, yeah, right, yes, yeah. The majority of it's uh, going to be right, student yes. materials. Um, but right now, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you that offhand. And also, what prohibits us from distributing materials to teachers after June 30th? A lot of them are not around. Yeah. It's during the summer, you don't see a lot of teachers. I, I appreciate that, but I mean, I think that we could find a way to get the information cost. to people. The, the post office is still in business. Yeah, I don't think we would be mailing them to the teachers at a cost to the district. I mean, I would suggest, if nothing else, you know, a, a, a approval for the purchasing of the, uh, uh, you know, the teaching materials. I, you know, I appreciate your suggestion, Bill, and I'm only wondering, would there be additional cost to us if we bought yeah. teaching materials separately? In other words, would we right. fail to take advantage yeah, of some the don't want to uh, don't discount of, right. of yes. current yes. quantity, right. you know, yes. by only buying a small amount as mm -hmm. opposed to buying the full program? Right. Sometimes true, teacher materials come yes. along at no at no charge. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you buy more than X number of student materials, and I don't know what the case is with this particular purchase, and, and I'm not sure you've even looked at that for this. No, I haven't. Yeah, I, I guess I would just want to come back to Anne Marie and, and ask to just to clarify: Is there any doubt in your mind that we have funds available for this purpose, or, I, is, the, or is the only question just exactly where the funds would, would, uh, would come out, what lines? I think the board asked me two questions. One question okay. was whether we had the federal money available, and whether we had yes, general fund money. And right. I know I mentioned to you that we do have money in the general fund, Correct. which we're trying to allocate. My question is the federal. 
Yes. Um, and if that's where the significant amount of money is, I think that um, I want to make sure I wouldn't feel confident in telling you or the board without looking at right. what qualifies under Title I and what can be used this year and next year. So that's, you know, um, if we were going to pay for it all out of the general fund, it would be a different story. It would be a significant amount of money. But the federal grants are specific, and, I, and I'm a little concerned more about exactly what we can allocate to that. Do we, if, 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 you know, worst case scenario where none of the title fund money is, can be used for this, then it will come out of the general fund. And is, uh, you know, when we did the, the budget for this year, how, how much money was allocated for, uh, for textbooks? We allocate textbooks based on the amount of money that we get from the state, which is um, $57.50 a child. So that, that would be the whole allocation of textbooks across the whole district. said 57 per student um, if you just looked at it from a textbook standpoint the entire program would be covered um, by our textbook allocation yeah doesn't permit you to buy another textbook for anything else in the at district the for the year level you're getting for the whole year for anybody in no, the I'm only talking district. about the, the but if you, if you do 57 yeah. by the amount of elementary students we have this program is completely covered And I don't see us buying any more than a literacy program and a math program within one school year. I, I have no idea. I can't be the judge of what are the textbooks are needed through the year. I'm certainly the wrong department for that. I just think that we are really at a turning stone with turning up the elementary student achievement. Um, so I understand individuals concerned for, you know, a little bit more information, but I think the next time we meet, we're still going to, to vote yes for this, or that you don't feel as if the um, $164,000 is worth trying to make that you know, step into RTI in Tier 2 um, advancement at the elementary school level. I mean, I can tell you that um, as we look at budget codes, et cetera, we are going to propose exactly what we can afford. So if it means we have to reduce parts of the program so that we have a smaller number of resources, shared resources, or what have you, we will do that. Um, but we're not going to change which programs we're proposing to adopt. We're just going to change the amount of what we're buying. Any other questions? Can we take any from the audience? Okay. Yeah, sure. I, have a question. Um, I also want to uh, comment on the, um, the the belief that I uh, I think there is a real need uh, for uh, the programs at the elementary level. Um, just some things to think about, and Linda, if I could ask you, um, is there an expectation, I know we're talking about getting materials to teachers uh, by June 30th, mm -hmm. um, is, that, is that an indication that there's an expectation uh, for teachers to study and learn the new reading and the math programs over the summer and be prepared to roll out uh, day one in September, uh, given the timeliness of all of this? Right. So that, that's my first question. Um, the second question is, I was also, at the education committee meeting, uh, I did get to speak to some teachers after the meeting. Um, you know, I followed up uh, with the membership, um, and some of the, the the questions and concerns that teachers did have outside of the think tank, because there's a lot of, you know, K-5 uh, math and literacy teachers that were not part of um, the think tank and are unaware of the, the program. Obviously, they're waiting for emails from me um, to to give them some feedback. Um, is there going to be any um, extraneous costs uh, to to the district, or um, is there an expectation that there would be in-service um, 
available and professional development available for the teachers over the summer to, to prepare or are they going to self-teach themselves with these programs and be prepared in September to roll out a curriculum? Uh, would there be curriculum writing opportunities and, and is that call, those costs all tied in? Just, just something to think about because, you know, I, I'm a teacher and I know teachers, they'll get the material, it'll be great for a day or two, and then, like Bill said, after July, I mean, you know, sometimes it's hard to even get a hold of people. So what is the expectation over the summer and how is the district going to um, or prepare themselves to, um, you know, allocate money for those type of trainings that I would think need to happen? Because when we start September, uh, you know, with the APPR, uh, there's a lot, a lot of, a lot more than just peas on the plate. I mean, there's a lot to be dealing with that teachers will be working on their own to try to get themselves uh, to understand the Danielson rubric and so on and so forth. So, just some things to think about. And if you guys have any, you know, anything on that, right? Um, no training over the summer would be a required training. There will be optional um, different types of training that teachers can engage in through the course of the summer if they choose. So, so the district's going to to make that available? Uh, yes. Um, right. There, there are online trainings and those sorts of things that teachers can take advantage of through the course of the summer if they choose to. Um, however, all teachers will receive training during those days beginning um, at the end of August next year. They will receive full days of training in the implementation of the math program. At that so time. that is well in as live APPR training. training as well? Yes, we've got many, many trainings that will be happening at that time. So there is going to be availability for teachers to be paid over the summer to do the training? Um, I don't know yet in terms of uh, payment of, but there will be optional training available to teachers that they can choose to take advantage of if they wish. Okay. There's so, online so training it, available. It may be voluntary. It may be voluntary, correct. So that would not <coughs> necessarily constitute that every teacher would be prepared to come in and roll out. That's correct, because we can't okay. mandate training over the summer. Right. Right. Yes. Unless, of course, you know, you're, you're, you're paying and then you, you get more people to come. So it's just questions that have come up since right. Thursday. Um, and I've kind of sent out some information to the teachers to get some feedback, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, and these are some of the questions that have come up, you know, what's going to be the expectation. Great, they get the materials before the end of the school year, but then what are we looking at time-wise here mm -hmm. in terms of preparation, um, you know, for, for September? And is the expectation going to be the program will roll out day one in September? Right. Um, well, the expectation would be that the teachers will have the materials the week before school starts and that they will roll it out in the way that they deem appropriate. It's an instructional resource, it's not the curriculum. Right. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. any other questions from the board? Okay, thank you. We have a motion for executive session. Motion to adjourn to executive session to review the employment history of a particular person and the board will return as soon as possible. Second. Comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.